Even as woodworking moves into new strange futuristic fronts, the workbench still acts as the focal point of the shop. Even in this day, the workbench is the most important tool in our arsenal to completing projects. But workbenches by themselves are naked of the greater power that can be achieved when we add appliances like vices to them. Bench vices are such an important part of the bench infrastructure and act, as the great Paul Sellers has declared, like a third hand. With methods to hold stock to the table, creating joints becomes much easier. Today we're going to magnify one of the oldest bench vices in modern history, the double screw vise or the misnomer known as the Moxon vise. We'll see if we can improve the design even 400 years after the first recorded mention of it. By now you've probably heard of the Moxon vise. If you put the term Moxon vise in a video search, you'll see that there have been dozens upon dozens of videos that have attributed a double screw vise, that is a vise with two handles that clamp stock to a man named Joseph Moxon. Joseph Moxon, from all accounts, was not even a woodworker. Much like the adage, history is written by the victors, the invention of the double screw vise has been attributed to a man simply due to his documentation of tools. But how did Moxon become celebrated for this wonderful tool? According to Wikipedia, Joseph Moxon was a hydrographer to Charles II, as well as an English printer who specialized in mathematical books and maps. He was a maker of both globes and mathematical instruments. Besides this, he created instructional manuals for printers as well as how-to books for tradesmen. But labeling Moxon as the creator of the double screw vise is akin to Walmart taking credit for the George Foreman grill or Noah Webster for creating the English language. The Moxon Vice nomenclature was actually started only 13 years ago by a woodworker named Christopher Schwartz. The story goes that he saw an image in Joseph Moxon's Mechanic Exercises book, which led to him naming the vice after the printer instead of the inventor. To go deeper down the rabbit hole of the double screw vice, the image of the vice that Moxon published is nearly an exact copy of the vice from Andre Philippian's Principles of Architecture printed around the same time. In Andre's image, the vise is hanging on the wall, where it is presumed to be stored when not in use, suggesting it was meant to be placed on the surface of the bench. If we look at Joseph Moxon's image, we can see that it's been attached to the front of the bench. In Moxon's joinery section, he writes, Sometimes a double screw is affixed to the side of the bench, or sometimes its farther check is laid an edge upon the flat of the bench and fastened with a hold fast, or sometimes two on the bench. This would indicate that the vices were used in a couple different ways, either attached to the bench as we typically attach our carpenter vices, or placed on the surface and held down with hold fasts. A third person, Randall Holm, who was a close friend of Joseph Moxon, also documented the vice in his book, Academy of Armory. There's a mix of irony as some will accuse Joseph Moxon for stealing the vice image from Andre Philippian, yet use his name to describe the device. The truth is that the Mechanic Exercises book is a collection of volumes of Joseph Moxon's lifetime of work that was compiled posthumously. While most will point out that his book has a 1703 published date, it's actually a third edition. I was able to find one that dates back to 1694, three years after his death. There really is absolutely no way of knowing when any of the volumes were written, which makes calling anything stolen a dishonest way of describing Moxon's work. The true inventor or inventors of the double screw vise, like the inventors of the dovetail joint and many of the other tools and techniques that we use today, will probably never be known. But it serves as a reminder that even with all the high-tech tools and equipment that we have, there are still tools and devices that are just as relevant today as they were hundreds of years ago. If you have a carpenter style bench vise that's already attached to your bench, you're probably looking at this vise and thinking that the double screw vise is unnecessary. But this vise has a few advantages that your attached vise doesn't have. Before I knew anything about the double screw vise, if I needed to do any kind of work with the end grain, I relied on my single screw vise. The problem with the single screw vise, they have absolutely no depth clearance for any kind of stock because there is a single point of pressure and a couple pins that basically keep the front vise from spinning. All of my pressure is centered in the middle of my vise. If you have a short board to work on that's the size or a little bit bigger than your jaw, you can get away with this method. But a longer board, it means I have to move over to the edge of my clamp. 
the pressure I put on the vise will be greater the closer I get to the tightened screw in the center. Instead of getting a nice solid grip, I'm left with a pivoting board, which is incredibly annoying. Now you might say, why not put more pressure on the vise? The more pressure you put on the vise with stock on either side of the clamping screw will create a problem called racking. Your vise doesn't know where the stock is and it's not going to try to grip one side more than the other. Instead, the jaw will twist. The side with the board in it will lock in place, but the opposite side where there isn't any resistance will begin to rack or to unevenly close. If I tighten this up, you can see that this is getting more narrow as this side is obviously a little bit wider. This is a very dangerous problem for single screw vices as your front jaw can break the screws that hold the boards on or worse, you can bend the pins. I've seen several people try to make up for this by creating a racking jig that will basically flip down layers of stock until it's the same thickness as the stock you're trying to clamp. But you never get away from the problem with the clamping pressure being uneven. Simply put, carpenter vices really aren't designed to work on the end grain of a board. But if we switch to a double screw vise, you can see that as I add my stock, I have absolutely no obstruction in the center. In fact, as long as my stock is less than the width between both pressure points, I can very easily add large pieces of stock in here that are locked in by both screws. The limit to what I can add lengthwise is based on the floor. On this bench, I can work on stock that's 40 inches long, which is more than enough space for my projects. No pivoting stock, everything stays locked in place, and I can do what I need to do. But let's talk about the advantages that this vise has over the single screw vise. With true double screw vises, the holes in the front jaw are actually wider than the ones in the back. This gives you the ability to purposely rack this vise. Yes, with this vise, racking is a good thing. Stock being what it is, is not always gonna be dimensionally square. You might have something like a tapered leg that you're working on, or you might be removing the bark off of a cookie. The double screw vise is a beast that will clamp odd shapes without batting an eye. As a removable device, adding this to your bench will get the stock closer to you for better cuts. My bench is about four inches taller than most websites recommend. But even at this height, I'm constantly bending over to get closer to my work. If you're working on joints, you want to be close to your stock when you map things out. And when you have to cut things, having your stock at elbow level is much more ergonomic and gives you a mechanical advantage. These vices can also be used to hold stock upright on the surface. Use in conjunction with a planing stop and you can keep your stock stationary on the top of your bench as you work on it. And finally, if your stock you're working on has any types of twists or bows, you can straighten them long enough to cut joints. When you put the joints together, it will straighten out the stock. With all of these benefits, the convenience of opening and closing jaws with a single screw really loses a lot. Stock can still be clamped on its side and on its edge like the single screw vise. Some have criticized Moxon for not understanding how this vise works by diagramming it as being attached to the side of the table, but I couldn't disagree anymore. The double screw vise might be the design that we need to move back to, ignoring the convenience of the single screw vise. Double screw vices are incredibly easy to make and can be made with hardware that you can find at your local hardware store. When I made mine, it literally took me a couple hours to make it along with locking knobs. To make my simple version, I designed it to be built with just seven boards. Two construction two by eights make up the jaws, a four by four gives it a wider footprint so it sits better on the bench, and four small pieces of hardwood make up the knobs. Lumber can be cut with hand tools down to dimension size, and the only power tool that's necessary to complete this is a drill press or even a drill if you have steady hands. It really is an excellent and easy project if you're just starting out and don't have a lot of power tools. Before you spend hours digging through stock in your local lumber store, boards don't even really have to be without flaws. Of course, you're going to want to avoid knots, but slight twists, cups, or bows will work. Earlier in this video, you might have seen me lock my jaws closed on my stock, but still saw a gap at the top. There is definitely a twist to my construction stock, but it doesn't affect the clamping power. I drilled holes in both pieces of stock using inexpensive spade bits, so you don't need to run off and buy expensive forcer bits to drill them out. For the screwing part, I used 5 8 carriage bolts and epoxy. A lot of the double screw vices that I've seen made online omit the larger hole on the second clamp face due to the threads damaging the stock in time. But I fixed that by adding a piece of conduit, which will give my vise a longer life. With this vise, I wanted to use my holdfast to hold it in place. So I used a 4x4 that's a length minus a couple inches between both of my dog holes. If you're not interested in using dog holes, you'll need to cut your 4x4 to be slightly longer than the body of the vise, so that you can add F-clamps. I use glue and screws to attach the block to the jaws. Before gluing the boards together, be sure to prep them by sanding each edge that will get glue. Of course, 
You'll need to use nuts to tighten the front jaw to the back. Since nobody wants to carry around a wrench and tighten it each time, you'll need to make knobs. I made my knobs by capturing square nuts between four pieces of stock. Square nuts are slightly more expensive than regular nuts, but they have more surface area on the face, so they won't strip out later on and are incredibly easy to cut in your stock with a chisel. Believe it or not, that's all it takes to make a double screw vise. They take up very little room when not in use as they can be stood up on their ends. If you're interested in making a very basic vise with hardware you can find at your local hardware store, I created a separate step-by-step -step video showing how to make one along with some very simple knobs. If you build this historical vise, you're not going to regret making it. I've only been using this for about a month, but I can definitely see why both Moxon and Philebia not only documented it, but also created images to better illustrate it. If you look through either printer's books, you'll realize that not every tool got an illustration. This signifies to me that it had great value, as images weren't easy to publish. This is my updated version. I call it the quad screw vise. The quad vise I created does exactly what the original set out to accomplish, clamping stock to be worked on but I thought it would be really interesting to add a second jaw to the top. My reason for having a double screw vise is so that I can work on the end grain to create joints. But doing the work on the end of a board is really only half of the work. The other half is the face of the board, which is something that the original double screw vise is not very proficient with. By adding a vise to the top, I get the same raised height as the vertical jaw. It raises my work above the surface as well as freezing the joint in place. Keeping the joint locked in position has a number of benefits. I personally like making dowel joints, but usually it means I have to drill out the face first, find some way to clamp it to a board at a 90 with the face, and use the first hole as a template to complete the hole. Working with the upper vise, I can clamp the entire joint together like a giant corner clamp and finish the joint with a single hole. If I'm doing a dovetail, I can start my tails in the vertical jaw and then transfer it to the horizontal jaws to mark out my pins. This is much more reliable than trying to hold my stock and add my marks as it again acts as a giant corner clamp to keep everything in place. Larger miter joints can be clamped together during glue ups. As you're not trying to use several clamps to line everything up. And I know what you're thinking, you obviously can't do all four corners with this. But being able to do two corners and then put the box together later is far easier when you have two sides that are already perfectly parallel. One problem that I ran into that really threatened this entire project was the idea that I'd have to take off the knobs every time I wanted to add the board. Because obviously, if you're working on your stock down here, you don't wanna have to worry about cutting into the top jaw. To fix that, I just made my cuts all the way to the end. And it still doesn't have any problem, it, it works fine because the knobs are wide enough to support that cutout. The next hurdle that I wanted to overcome is the bulk of the vise. Because of the pressure needed to hold things in place due to warping as you clamp, having thick jaws is the only way to prevent deflection. To combat this, I did a couple things. First, I used my bench to strengthen the back jaw and formed it against the table, which is like adding a really thick board. This means that the stock I use here doesn't need to be very thick, minus about an inch. The second thing I did works with the other jaw by adding tracker runner to the inside face. I'm not relying as much with the pressure of the jaw as much as I rely on the grippy surface of the rubber. Every once in a while, you'll get a piece of unruly stock that needs to be flattened. We can still get the pressure we need to do this by using a cambered call on the front jaw. The center point presses inward and easily straightens things up. It might not seem like a big deal to create a smaller footprint for this, but you have to remember that these vices are 32 inches long, and if you're storing them under your bench, it's nice to be able to pull it out without pulling a muscle. Finally, I wanted to make this more convenient to use. If you add your screw vise to the top of the bench, you're either reaching for F-clamps or hold fast to hold it in place. I instead went with a single three-quarter inch hex bolt that's epoxied into a piece of stock that's attached to the bottom of the vise. I grab it and set it on the table, and I'm ready to go. When it came to locking the jaws together, the knobs I made work fine for the upper jaw which ride on carriage bolts. But having threaded rods stick out on the vertical side meant I needed to keep them short or tear skin off my arms as I was constantly bumping into the simple screw vise that I made in the last chapter. I liked the look of the old fashioned handles and thought it would be great to use them instead of what the more modern solution of having threaded rods jut out from the front has become. I really thought that this would be an easy solution. I just make handles and twist them in with nuts on the back of the vise. But then I realized I would need to turn those handles several times to get them to move. 5 threaded rods takes 11 times to turn just one inch, whereas 
The old wooden handles took about five or six turns. I could feel my wrist ache just by thinking about it. Instead, I designed a quick release mechanism that I'm really proud of on the back of the base. You squeeze two steel plates together, which opens a pre-threaded hole that allows you to pull the handle in and out. As soon as you get the handle where you want it, you turn it a couple times and it locks solid. The full build and plans for the advanced design are also on my second channel. If you're interested in either, I'll have links in the description. Thanks for watching, and before I go, I'd like to thank my patrons. I have never used any money from Patreon for any personal things. All donations are used to help build better videos. If you liked what you saw in this video, consider being a part of the team. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, Tudor the Barbarian, Mike Laurinaitis, Les N, and Gary G. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things.